is a place where transformation and the likeness of Jesus Christ takes place. And this is a place where we are all welcomed. We welcome those who come to worship. We welcome those who come for celebration of life services. We come and we welcome those who come to be fed, those who are hungry, those who come in need of prayer, and those who come simply to be heard. And even those who are yet to come, those who we are to love like Christ loves us. And this morning, I just want to say thank you to those who have participated in this journey of our capital campaign from the earliest time of purchasing and taking down the buildings to the north of us, never forgetting the good work, the good ministry that was done at the Agape House, which you all remember so well. Recognizing those who came almost a decade ago from HCI, our bishop here who was a part of that to guide First Maryville at the corner of First and Main to be a welcoming place. So we thank you, Bishop Barr. We thank you, Melissa Dodd. We thank you for all those who have been supported, supportive of our, our efforts here. Uh, Horizon Stewardship, Dustin couldn't be with us today, but we are grateful for the relationship that we've developed with Horizon Stewardship. We couldn't have done these campaigns without them and the good Reverend Dustin Cooper who guided us in our fundraising. The Reverend Scott Moon and Michelle who had such an incredible vision to lead us to where we are today. We want to say thank you to Something Borrowed and our capital campaign celebration team for the beautification of our building. Thank you to our trustees and our custodial service. And I would be amiss if I didn't say thank you to my staff, our church staff. So thank you staff for all the hard work that you put in. Even since I've been here in almost three years, Bishop, almost three years, God is good. I want to say thank you to the church family, all of you who came on all church cleanup day to help us a month ago in anticipation of today. I'm grateful to all of our campaign leaders today and yesterday, chairpersons who stepped up and said yes to leading us faithfully into good stewardship. Mark Burnsides and Bob Dewhurst in phase one, growing first for the future. John and Chris Steele in phase two, leading us through the Because He Lives campaign. And today, Mike and Karma Kenman, phase three, this final phase that we're in, where we say that we are together in faith. While the pledges are continuing to be fulfilled, we have uh, almost 18 more months of this capital campaign, and you can see what a great celebration this is, that we've paid off this loan so far ahead. But the pledges are still coming in, and you are still being faithful, good stewardship, and so we say thank you. But most of all, we want to say thank you to our Lord. And so I ask you for a moment, let's bow our hearts. As we close our eyes, we bow our hearts, we bow our heads, and we say, thank you, Lord. Holy God, you are the Lord of life and the Lord of celebrations. You are one who brings such joy, and we thank you for this place of worship, this place of discipleship and fellowship. We dedicate to your name that this place and this space will always be a house of salvation and grace where Christians are gathered together. May we always worship you in spirit and truth, learn of you and from you, and grow in you together in love and together in faith. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So at this time, I would like to invite anyone from the Capitol Campaign, past and present, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Um, there are many, many symbols that have been a part of these capital campaigns, but you have seen the symbol of the tree. That's been one of the symbols we've used in this final campaign. You know, I believe people plant trees knowing that they're going to live for a while. They may not know they're going to block the view of a church that is there, but they do plant trees knowing 
that it's going to provide protection, protection from wind, protection from sun. They plant trees knowing that they produce fruit. That fruit may be nuts, that fruit may be apples, that fruit can be all kinds of different things. You saw the tree that's now in the gathering space first on the sanctuary. And you saw it representing the fruits of the spirit. Since then it's moved in here while our capital campaign was continuing. It changed with the seasons. We now have spring, spring on our tree. And we've had fall and there's a while there we didn't have, have it at all. But have leaves at all, but, but trees represent life that goes on for a long time. I believe the individuals, thank you. I believe the individuals who laid the cornerstone for this church in the late 1800s really believed and they could see it, maybe not all the details, but they could see what a Methodist church would do in a community of, of Maryville. And that vision has gone on and continues throughout this congregation as we continue to meet the needs of the community, as we continue to worship God, and in our small groups and larger groups as we continue to learn how we can be followers of Christ and followers of God. The uh, cobbler is one of those things that I'll admit 18 months ago I couldn't see. Um, we were talking about the beginning of putting this campaign together. Geez, what would a celebration look like when we were able to burn the note? And Dustin, who was kind of giving us the, the protocol and the, the pro process for this, said, well, why don't you make some apple pie? And I was thinking, there is no way we can make apple pie for 130 people. <laughs> but, but... I think Jim said, well, how about we do a cobbler? And then good grief, Carol Couts knows how to cook things like that for lots and lots of people. <laughs> so, yes, indeed. You have to be patient. I believe you have to have faith in what may be out there. We have to trust. Trust God. Trust each other. We have to listen. You know, for me, it's when God dings me in the head. Sometimes he says, hey, Linda, pay attention. <laughs> and the time will come, I guess, indeed, we can see it. So the apple cobbler today represents all of those things. A fruit of a spirit, a completion of being able to burn your nose, and also the ideas that trees grow and keep growing and keep growing because we're not done it. That's part of what I think I can see. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today. Um, as the scripture was read earlier, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are certainly glad to be here today. And this really is a joyful day. And it's a day for us to celebrate. It's a day for us to celebrate where God has led us to this point. Because as being co-chairs of this campaign, Mike and I have been amazed to see where he has led us and to see God's hand in all of this. From the very beginning till now, till today. Um, it's amazing to watch his hand work through our congregation. We would like to thank each of the past campaign chairs and of course all of those who have been on the committees. Um, you've used your spiritual gifts to help invite our congregation and to lead us and also to um, keep us faithful to our pledges and encourage people to give. And we thank you all for being so faithful to that. Mike and I believe that God does lead us where we're supposed to go. And I can certainly see I can see that he's leading us and that he continues to do so. And I am so anxious to see what he has for us to go in the future. Well, we've had such wonderful speakers here this morning. Now you get me. <laughs> it has been very wonderful to be where we are today, be at this point where 
or no, has been paid. That, that's truly a, a wonderful thing. We are at the place where, you know, we're at the place where I have to have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Can you speak up, please? Or Closer? We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That really doesn't work with this microphone, so. Um, we're at the place in our economy now where we're starting to hear that interest rates might start going up. Well, we have just paid off our note. That is not a coincidence. <laughs> you know? God led us to where we are today. He puts things in place for us. You look at the history of our church and, and this project that we've had, and we know that God's timing really is perfect. We've been told in Proverbs 19.21 that many are the plans in the man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Now, Quite a while back, I, I shared a story with you all about our church in the early days. This would be back in the mid-1800s. Uh, pastor was sent to our church, or the congregation that was here, and there was a debt of somewhere over $10,000 in probably the 1850s. They were paying 10% interest on that debt. And the debt was owed to the local saloon keeper. <laughs> Does the story kind of sound familiar now? <laughs> but anyway, they got busy, they took donations, they, they talked to people, and they paid that debt off in one year, which is maybe a bigger miracle than what we've done in, in six years. But you know what? God was actually laying things out for us today. God's purpose prevailed. Now, it's a, it, it's a wonderful thing to see God's purpose prevail like that. We need to be sure we thank Him for letting us retire this debt in a timely manner. And now, being debt free, all the monies that come in on our ongoing campaign can be used directly towards the upkeep of, of his buildings. So with that, I think we'll proceed for the note. And I would invite anybody from the past campaign committees that want to join us, please come forward. question for you is now what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do with God's blessing? That's your next thing. It doesn't stop here. If it does, you'll die. What are you going to do? You didn't get it paid off to sit back. You got it paid off to do something. So I don't know what it is. I don't see it yet. But your next prayer needs to be, God, what do you need us to do? If you're in a great mission field, and there are people yet in Maryville on this campus that do not know Jesus Christ. They do not know grace. They do not know forgiveness. So what are we going to do with this gift from God? Let's pray. God, we are deeply grateful. We ask that you bless this church, the leaders, the mission field. And we are grateful for your generosity with us to help us.
to lead us down this way that we could be now debt free so that so that so that we can attend to your mission of your children all of your children in this mission field and be the very best disciples and church on mission for you that we can be and everybody agreed and said amen, amen. Bishop Parr, we want to thank you for coming to Maryville this morning and being with us. We enjoyed listening to you. And since I know now that you have good experience hanging signs, uh, I would like for you to have this. Uh, another sign that you might need for a meeting that you go to once in a while that where, where it needs to be remembered that God's purpose does prevail. Well, thank you very much. our HCI here to try the deal. So, uh, as they all are, and so, some have been highly successful because they can see it, others not so much because they could not. And I'm deeply appreciative that you could see it. And I will hang this up in the office. As you know, we're in trying times as the Methodist Church at the moment. And so knowing that God, God is going to prevail, friends, and there is going to be a Methodist Church. And it's going to be a grace-led church. And, uh, not the first time some folks have decided to go a different direction. In fact, we've started half of the denominations in America. <laughs> so we can start another one. It's okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do what God needs us to do, friends. I appreciate this, and I appreciate I appreciate y'all's faithfulness and your saints. Thank you. So don't rush. Don't run over your neighbor or friend. Inside is uh, hot apple coffee.